ஹரி ஓம் தத்சத் வெல்கம் டு ஜோதர்மய யோகா வி ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஸ்பிரிச்சுவாலிட்டி அ ஜர்னி டு செல்ஃப் ரியலைசேஷன் ப்ளீஸ் சப்ஸ்கிரைப் ஃபார் த மிஸ்டிக்கல் மீனிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த ஸ்கிரிப்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் டு என்ஜாய் டெய்லி சத் சங் வித் அஸ் வி ஆர் கரண்ட்லி எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் த புக் தி ஆர்ட் ஆஃப் பாசிட்டிவ் ஃபீலிங் பை சுவாமி ஜோதிர்மயானந்தா அண்ட் நரேட்டட் பை மை செல்ஃப் சுவாமி நிகிலானந்தா இன் டுடே சத் சங் we will continue the journey on desires happiness cannot be secured externally human beings always try to reach out and secure whatever possible places and things seem to promise them happiness in so doing they are tricked again and again by one grand illusion after another as an example suppose a friend of yours goes on a vacation to hawaii Early in the morning he sits by the ocean and the sun is shining on the waves and everything seems so bright and peaceful that his mind becomes calm and he feels overwhelmed with joy lacking training in philosophy your friend begins to feel that that spot where he sat by the sea is uniquely special and has the power to bring him untarnished happiness at all times soon his mind tells him you have enough money why don't you buy a property right here every day you could come and sit by the beach and enjoy the beauty as intensely as you are enjoying it now hearing these inner whispers your friend's mind flares up with intense desire he thinks without that happiness life is empty this is what i must have quickly this one idea commands his single minded concentration he rushes to a real estate office starts investigating properties and their values and then actually purchases a property by the sea with the land in hand he now sets about the building a house furnishing it landscaping it with his mental and physical energy and material resources with these tasks and away he then goes again to sit beside the sea at sunrise does he enjoy the beauty as he did in his first experience much to his dismay as he sits watching the waves he starts to think about all the red tape he has to cut through to get to the property about how much money is left in the bank and how he is going to pay the mortgages about how he is going to avoid the damage caused by the salty wind that comes to his house and destroys all his metallic fixtures about what to do then when the next storm comes about how to defend his house against robbers and vandals with all these thoughts he discovers that he has lost all his happiness and serenity that he initially enjoyed your friend could have avoided all that work and ensuing disappointment with a little philosophical understanding happiness doesn't come from outside each time your mind becomes calm and you feel happy it is because the joy of the self within is reflecting in the lake of your mind enjoy your happy experiences but always remind yourself that the joy came from within your own heart from within your innermost self which is god in devotional terms remind yourself that all comes to you from god in vedantic terms remind yourself that all is god nothing but god you are yourself nothing but the divine self and it is by turning to your own inner self that you experience happiness when you experience a moment of joyous contentment in life do not obey your senses blindly as if they were the master with a whip and you were only a slave 
Give yourself some breathing room, a moment for reflection. Understand that the happiness you experience in the realm of senses is a form of illusion and do not rush to try to secure it forever. If you must pursue objects, do it knowingly. Understand profoundly that happiness is not coming from them. If you keep company with a thief knowingly, then there is little harm. If you keep company with a thing, thief unknowingly, then you are going to be hurt intensively. Because if you know that somebody is a thief, first of all, you avoid them. Second of all, even if they were with you, you would keep your possessions securely. Whereas if you simply trust, then you end up in disappointment in this case. So, the rich man and the thief. There's a humorous story which is told about a rich man who was traveling on a train. After departure, another man entered into the same compartment. He was a thief and the rich man knew it. Soon the rich man made friends with the thief without revealing to the thief that he knew about his criminal intentions. Each time the rich man had to go out, he secretly placed his money under the pillow of the thief. When the thief found himself alone, he looked around everywhere for the money, but try as he may, he couldn't find it. Time passed, the journey ended, and it was time for the men to go their separate ways. The thief with humility approached the rich man and said, What a wonder! I saw your money, and whenever you went out, I searched everywhere for it, but I couldn't find it. Please tell me your secret. The rich man said, You are a thief, but not a psychologist. I knew that you would look everywhere, but under your own pillow, under your own nose. So I hid the money under your pillow. The reason, the lesson to learn from this story is that if you are in the company of a thief, you must be more clever than he is so as not to be hurt. The objects of the world are like thieves. If we let them, they rob us of our peace of mind by leading us to believe that they are the source of happiness and that they will stay with us forever. However, if you are wise, you recognize that happiness does not come from objects and that objects are perishable and impermanent. Knowing these facts, you begin to control your desires. Then what happens to that energy of desire? It turns into an energy of divine love. Instead of desiring objects, you desire mental peace, liberation, karma when controlled and sublimated becomes divine love. It becomes mumukshutva, aspiration for attaining self-realization. Chemically speaking, diamonds and coal are both nothing but carbon, but there is a big difference between the two. Desire for the world is like coal. Desire for attaining God-realization is like a diamond. Worldly desires can be transformed into spiritual aspirations. Just as mere coal is, tra is transformed into beautiful diamonds, when a constant effort is directed to control karma and to redirect it in a proper way. We will talk about another interesting story on this topic in tomorrow's satsang. This is Swami Nikhilananda. Hari Om Tat Sat.